Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video and another unboxing and first impressions. I'm very excited about this one because when I saw the renders and the photos, the watch looked spectacular. It is a debut model from Keaton Timeco and it's called the Keris Diver. And it not only has a pretty original design, but they also have a range of materials used. Now let's open it and see what we got and then we'll talk in more detail. But I pre-cut this box because you keep making fun of my of my knives and how I'm gonna cut my fingers off. So I just sli sliced everything so I can just open it like this. But this is the first time of me checking out the package. So it comes with this bubble wrapping. Inside is this pouch that looks like a small backpack, pretty cool. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be receiving your watch in anything like this, but this is just a prototype that gets sent around for reviews. So inside, again, another bubble wrapping. And here is the watch itself in this bag. So let's open it up and see what we got. Okay, so here's the watch itself and look at it. This thing is 41 millimeters in diameter with a 48 millimeter lug to lug, so it should wear very nicely even on my 6.7 inch wrist. It's full of facets and different angles making it pretty original, including the crown at 12 o'clock. It comes with a sapphire crystal, a ceramic bezel and it's powered by the Miyota 9000 series of movements. I don't know if it's a 9039 or 90S5 or whatever you want to call it, but it's a no date version of the 9015. Let's check out the bezel because it's been moved. And the action is pretty good. It's not super smooth, but it clicks precisely and it's pretty okay and easy to grip. Like I said, the crown is at 12 o'clock and it's pretty small, so let's unscrew it. Yeah, we're having a problem getting to the crown because of the strap, so let's just try it with one finger. Now it goes, yes, okay. So you can wind it and pulling it out to the first position because it's a true no date movement, you can change the time. Now let's try to... Okay, so now we're having a problem screwing this in because you don't have a grip and I really don't have large fingers. So this, this is pretty bad. I think I cut finally managed. Okay, so you can do it, but it's a lot of work. And like I said, I have pretty small fingers, so I don't know how someone with bulkier fingers is gonna make it. Now this is a pre-production prototype, so I really do hope that Keaton Timeco addresses this after after they watch my video because this to me is not acceptable as a usage. This is pretty disappointing. Maybe they'll fix it for the production models because look how the strap covers pretty much half of the crown. That's why you don't have enough grip. So that's pretty disappointing, although it looks pretty cool. I like the way the hands are made. As you can see, they're not even on both sides. They have like a curvature, like a sword, like a true sword. And like I said, this comes in a variety of materials, starting with the case. You can choose between stainless steel, grade five titanium and Damascus steel. When it comes to the dial, you can have a regular all loom dial. You can have Damascus steel dial and you can have something they called Crimiscus, which is titanium Damascus. And it's anodized and blue in color. It's pretty much pretty stunning in photos. And I'll put some of the renders probably here. And you can also have a wooden dial and it's made of Amboina burl, which is one of the most expensive burls out there that's used for gun grips, knife grips, and expensive pens and whatnot. It's very, very beautiful. And I'll put a render of that as well. This one is a Damascus steel, but it's kind of underwhelming in person. On camera, it looks pretty good, but let me just take it off camera. I kind of expected it to look a bit different, but what can you do? Anyways, let's check out the loom. 
and put it on my wrist. When it comes to pricing, it ranges from $350 for the basic stainless steel case and all loom dial, all the way to $790 for the Crimiscus dial and Damascus case, which in my opinion is the most beautiful. I mean, that and the wooden dial are the most beautiful two watches. So let's charge it a bit again and turn off the light to check out the loom. And there we go. Okay, the one thing that doesn't disappoint is the loom. It glows in blue and in, on camera it looks pretty good, but in person it looks even more spectacular. The chaptering is really very, very visible. I wish the hands were a bit thicker, but they're pretty visible as well. And as you can see, the bezel is loomed also. Let's turn on the, the light back on. So the loom is pretty amazing. The case back is closed and the watch seems a bit thick, but not overly thick. Let's try it on my 6.7 inch wrist and conclude this review. Okay, so it comes on this waffle strap rubber. Rubber and it's a pretty good rubber because I can see it's pliable, but it doesn't seem to be like one of those made of silicone that collects lint, but we'll see after I wear it for a couple of weeks. Now on my 6.7 inch wrist, as you can see, it doesn't overhang and it looks pretty good. It is large, but not overly large. I really like the dimensions. It is pretty thick, but as again, not overly thick. So pretty cool. And the rubber strap is very comfortable. So pretty cool watch. Anyways, that's it when it comes to this unboxing and first impressions. Like I said, please do stay tuned for the full review. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.